much. So get this let that go. Okay. Yep, I still see some people are coming in, so that's great. Um, thank you very much. So uh, yeah, so I'm I'm kind of like you, Elizabeth. Um, I personally use TikTok. Um, I'm on it quite a bit. I I, I do really enjoy it. Um, uh, and and some of my clients are starting to use it now too. So one of one of my uh, one of my is a wedding uh, venue, wedding event venue, and uh, advertising on <clears throat> on TikTok. Um, you got that one. Advertising on TikTok is uh, something they're starting to do right now, and and uh, it's it's really really uh, working for them. So um, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about you know, TikTok and, and, and how businesses can use it and if it's a right for you. So obviously the most important thing um, any business needs to do is to understand who their, their audience or their customers are and where do they spend their time? Is it on social media? Is it on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok? Is it on, you know, News 12? Is it, a, you know, where, where do they spend their time getting their information? And you need to understand that because TikTok is not for everyone. And as we'll go through this, you'll see that um, um, it skews much younger, right? It's a much younger new thing. But that being said, um, its its growth is explosive, and there's and the engagement levels are so high that even if your audience skews a little bit older, it's still worth something to consider. So. Um, you know, I definitely, you know, encourage you to keep an open mind and, and, um, and, uh, you know, and see if, see if this is going to work for you. So what I'm going to do is if it's okay. Um, so we'll leave, what do you think? We'll just leave this poll open for a little while, Elizabeth. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. We'll see if more people come in and, and answer. Okay. So, so look, you know, I, I'm not the end all be all expert on TikTok. I'm going to tell you that right now. I'm a marketer, so I look at TikTok as it's a platform that my my clients might want to be on. Okay, and that's how I look at it, right? So, um, you know, I'm not here to teach you how to make a TikTok video, although I do have a video at the end if we have time that will show you the basics, okay, uh, on how to do it. Okay, so um, you know I'm a I'm, I'm a digital marketing agency visionary. We've been around for this is our 31st year. Started out before the internet, so um, we've had to evolve, and that's the key. I think the key to any business, what you're doing, is you need to evolve and understand that things are changing, and now things are changing at an, at an even more rapid pace than they did years ago. Every year, you know, it's something different. So you must keep an open mind, and you must be willing to fail and try things. Um, you know, you, you wanna test things and, and see if, they, if they'll work for you. Um, I actually had, um, uh, I, I saw an advertisement for something. I don't remember what it was, it was some business thing. It was some software and I responded to it and I spoke to the gentleman and he said he, he just started advertising on TikTok and it just exploded for him. It was just unbelievable, the response he got, which was very interesting. So, um, so I would say, um, Elizabeth, if you could just keep an eye on any questions that might come into the chat. Uh, if you do have questions, just as we're going along, you know, throw them out there. Um, if people have experiences, uh, you know, with TikTok, you know, I think we want to hear about that as well. How, if you're using it, if you're using it for your business, we want to hear about it. And um, I'm just going to jump right in here if that's okay. So we're going to share the screen. If that's okay. Okay. All right, so everyone's good. Everyone can see we're good, no problems. Okay. All right, very good. So let me just get ready here and we'll, all right. So the big question is, is you wanna know is will TikTok work for your business, right? That's the big question. The answer is maybe. So now that we've established that, I think we're pretty much done. <laughs> any questions no, no so that's the big question is will will it work for your business but i'm going to tell you also that in addition to getting your business out there on tiktok i have my business i have benefited personally from viewing videos on tiktok that are educational and resources and there's a couple out there for example there's an excel spreadsheet guru who who does these great tips 
and I follow her all the time and I've learned so much from her. Um, I'm a diabetic. So, uh, and guess what? Because of the algorithm and I, I watch videos about diabetic diets and how do you manage your diabetes. And when I start watching these videos and, and TikTok sees I'm staying with it and watching the video for three minutes, guess what they do? They start serving me up more of those videos and they start to, to build a profile on me, okay? And uh, so they understand that Henry's a diabetic. He likes fine art. He likes watching people, you know, walk into plate glass windows. You know, he, you know, whatever it is, you know, they start to build a profile on you. Um, so TikTok is a little bit different from other social media platforms in that it really prioritizes entertainment over commerce. So for example, you know, let's just say you're a restaurant. On Instagram, you might put a nice, beautiful lit photo of your dish of food, you know, with a, with a, you know, some basil on it and, you know, just some nice, very art artistic looking photo of food, you know, but here on TikTok, it's going to be more about, it might be a video about how to prepare that food. And maybe here's a, here's a hack, here's a trick, here's something you can do, you know, like you can, you can cook this thing in a coffee can or something like they make it fun and creative. Um, so it's really about entertaining uh, over really trying to sell people. So what is TikTok? It's a video sharing platform, okay? It, it uses filters and, and music and different types of transitions and animations to, to produce a very interesting video. Um, and um, that's, that's what we're looking at. So um, they're also, uh, in addition to the short form content, generally speaking, uh, TikTok videos last three minutes, okay? When you produce it and you create one in the app, you know, it's generally three minutes or less. Um, they do allow you now to upload videos that could be up to, I think, 10 minutes long because they're trying to compete a little bit more now with YouTube. Um, but if you create a, a video in TikTok, it's, it's generally three minutes or less. So what makes TikTok so unique? So it's all about that engagement, right? It's about engagement. It's about your ability to brand. It's, a, it's a, your ability to educate. And it's also this very unique algorithm that, that TikTok has that other social media platforms really don't. And it allows you to, um, to, to get your video out there even without followers because of this unique algorithm they have. So, so far so good, everyone good? No one's at the wrong place. They were expecting to see uh, another webinar. No, we're good, okay. So, you know, let's talk about that engagement. You know, average TikTok users spend almost 900 minutes a month on TikTok. That's a lot of time on TikTok. I think that translates to like 14 hours or something. Um, if you do the math, I'm not sure, but um, that's, that's a tremendous amount of time. So as a, as a business, when you look at that, you say, wow, there's a lot of eyeballs on, on, on TikTok. There's a lot of people spending a lot of time on TikTok. This might be a good place to get my message to, to these people because they're spending so much time. And I have to tell you, I, I, I do spend a lot of time. And I, I know, Elizabeth, you, you were talking about it too, you know, going through the videos and swiping through the videos and the ones you don't like, you just flick out real quick. And, and the ones that, you, you know, you do like, you might make them your favorite or save them. Um, like I said, a big thing for me are diabetic recipes. And I, you know, I get a ton of them off of TikTok or, or how do you stabilize your blood sugar? What types of, uh, Things can you use to stabilize your, but like very, very educational. And that's how I really use it for both my personal um, and my business um, for, to, to get educated, to learn things. Um, that's how I end up using it. You also have the ability with branding is because you can be very creative and you can focus your content. It's almost like native advertising that you're going to make this very unique, creative um, uh, um, video in TikTok that um, you know, while it's entertaining, it's also gonna be a form of advertising to get your message across. So for example, I have a video, uh, hopefully we'll have time to show it. I'm gonna speed it up a little bit because I know we, we only have an hour. A guy is a carpet repairman and he posts things on TikTok and he, he, he goes in and he's so passionate about what he does and he gets down on the ground, he's kissing the carpet and he's you know, a funny guy, but he really conveys the fact that he's, he really cares about his business 
He really cares about his clients. So he's not just saying I care about my clients and I'm, I really like what I do. He's making these very humorous TikTok videos about how he goes in and he repairs a carpet and he's laying on the floor, kissing the car. It's just very funny, very funny. Like I said, uh, instructional, very important. Um, you know, it, it allows you to, sh you know, to show useful life hacks. Uh, I've learned a lot about math. I, I learned a lot about math on TikTok, like like things like like, like you know on, on, on you know cross multiplying and and uh, you know the whole the algebra and 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 uh, calculus. Like I've, I've learned a lot about it, a lot of do it do it yourself projects, you know different things like that, and motive even motivational messages. So that, inst that instructional aspect of TikTok is great. And guess what? In this day and age, marketing is education, right? You can educate people and you position yourself as a authority in what you do, then that, uh, that's marketing and that's how people are gonna come to you. So this instructional aspect of it is very, very important. There's a lot of teachers even that, that are, are, are taking their condensed lessons and putting them on TikTok for students and things like that. That's where I'm learning the math stuff. I learned so much about math and different things like that, and history as well. I, I, there's a couple of great uh, TikTokers that I follow for history and, and in addition to like National Geographic and things like that. So uh, you're even seeing teachers now leveraging TikTok for it. So, so let's talk about that algorithm, right? Looks like we got someone who's coming in. I'm gonna admit them, there we go. He's going to react. Um, this algorithm is a recommend, recommendation system that determines which videos will appear on your For You feed. So your For You is like your home feed where all those videos come in, it's called For You. So they're gonna recommend videos based on your viewing habits and your viewing likes and dislikes. So the more you look at something, the more videos they're gonna serve you up based on, on, on your viewing habits. So it starts to learn as you're doing it. Sorry, okay. So it, it, it also takes the video popularity into account and will serve it up to larger audiences. So if, you're, if, you're, if your video starts to get it like an organic following, and I, I was just telling Elizabeth about this, my, my son's girlfriend made a TikTok video of her dog, you know, um, putting this ball in a machine that shoots the ball out and he runs around and he catches it and then he goes back and he puts it in. And she posted this TikTok video and she got contacted by some I don't know if it was Chewy or like some brand like with pets and stuff. And she had like a hundred thousand like follows on this thing. It was like crazy. Like she got, and she got all these brands reaching out to her about this video, trying to leverage this video. So this algorithm will take that popularity into account. And if it starts to organically build a following, it will serve it up more. So it's almost like this snowball effect that happens. Um, the more engagements that you receive, the more likely, like they said, it's going to be served up to larger audiences. So here's the here's the cool thing about TikTok is you don't have to have followers to be seen on TikTok. So like that's our big thing, right? Like on LinkedIn or Facebook, you know, it's like we're trying to connect with people and get get followers and things like that. With TikTok, you don't necessarily have to. Is that if you if you post something that's creative and unique that people will watch, it's going to go viral very quickly. It will go viral. It's amazing. Um, TikTok does not base their recommendations on your follower count or even pre pre your previous high-performing videos. It's unique. So it takes a video, that video as itself, and then if it starts to, to build a following, it's going to start serving it up even more. Now, that's not to say you don't want to build your followers. You do want to build followers. And there's things that you're also going to utilize within this like using hashtags and different things like that as well to help build followers. So followers are, are important, but what's more important is to develop a video that's really kind of an out of the box creative um, video that, that's really entertaining or educating uh, people. So they use machine learning to serve up these videos based on uh, the viewing habits. So the algorithm is the student and you're the teacher. Right, so you're you're looking at these videos, and it's constantly it's constantly evolving. Now, here's a, here's a little roadblock to all this, and it's just come out in the news recently. 
TikTok is, is owned by a, a company in China. And all of this data of your viewing habits, okay, that they're collecting was accessible by TikTok um, staff in China. And this was not looked upon very well here, here in the United States. And there was a lot of pushback. I think there was an article in BuzzFeed about this. Okay. So now TikTok is scrambling now to, you know, kind of put some safeguards in place about your, your, your viewing data and your habits, because as you guys know, with social media, they can develop a pretty um, accurate profile of a person based on what they're looking at. Are you Republican? Are you Democrat? Okay. Are you, you know, do, are you, there? are you obese? Are you, are you a diabetic? Are you, are you a star Wars fan? Like, like, you know, do you shop at uh, whole foods? You know, uh, you, you know, they, they can develop a whole, you know, profile of you. And this just came out in the news um, that, that they're, they're doing safeguards to do this. So this is just kind of a video. I, I, it just shows you how TikTok usage has grown over time. I guess you guys can see that, right? So it starts to go up over time and you'll see that TikTok will just explode and start going up over time. We'll start moving very soon. <laughs> It goes now. It's going to start making the jumps over these other social media. I don't know why a little zero went in there, but it, you'll see the count will come back in a second. I didn't make this this chart. This was uh, provided to me, so you can see TikTok just starting to leapfrog, like all these other social media channels. And then finally, it goes over LinkedIn, and that's pretty much where it's going to stay at this point. But you're going to see this explosive growth. It was the number one downloaded app on the App Store last this year, last year. Okay, so it's something you have to pay attention to. Okay, so you're just going to see it's just going to keep growing um, in leaps and bounds. Um, obviously, Facebook and YouTube are the big players in Instagram, but TikTok is up there now. So um, it's something you have to pay attention to. All right, well, I don't want to belabor that. So TikTok, 1 billion global monthly users. I'm just going to look here in chat real quick. Do we have anything? Everyone good at this point? Yep. Okay. Uh I Go was ahead. kind of hold Henry. Yeah. Um, Samantha asked a question. I was kind of holding off to see when it would be the right moment, but I could ask it now if you'd like. She said for vir virality, um, how can you optimize for long-term retention, getting people to come back and see your content more often? Okay. I'm not sure it, you're going to get to that. Well, in a word, consistency. So your videos, you should be consistent in the look and the feel. And as you go on TikTok, you're gonna see different types of video platforms. Yes, post every day. TikTok recommends at least three, three, three times a week, three and a half times a week. I don't know how you do a half, but you know, three times a week. So if you're consistent and you use a similar format, for example, this XL Pro that I follow, they use a very popular format where she videos herself as both parties of a dialogue. So she's the problem and she's the solution. And she's wearing different clothes. And, and she says, how do I merge these cells into one thing? And then she cuts back, you know, in a different set of telling her how to do it. And this type of back and forth um, that she uses is consistent. And she uses it throughout. So if you're consistent with it, guess what? Even if they don't follow you, because TikTok saw that you watched that video, maybe for the full three minutes or maybe two minutes and 30 seconds, they're going to serve up her next video to you. Right. So that's how you're going to, that's how you're going to start to get that long-term retention short of someone following you. Right. It's, it's really being consistent in what you do. Your video shouldn't look different every time, right? Pick a format, pick a style. Some people put text over their photo and it's just them talking, you know, uh, it's very important. All right. So here's your, your age group, right? 63% uh, of users are between 10 and 29 years old. So once again, you're looking at that demographic, right? And you're saying, is this applicable for my client, you know, my potential audience that I'm trying to reach? Um, that being said, I'm 62 and I'm on YouTube. I'm on uh, TikTok. So you're going to start to see over time that that's going to bump up that age for sure. Okay. Women outnumber men two to one on the platform. 
So if you're looking to reach a female 27 years old, guess what? Bingo. Okay. You know, Facebook has evolved. It used to be, well, I'm going to reach younger people on Facebook. Well, the teenagers aren't on Facebook anymore, or even my son. My son's 25. Like, my son is not on Facebook. He got off of Facebook. Why? Because his parents were on Facebook, and he didn't want him to see it. So now it's Snapchat, TikTok, you know, all that stuff, right? So you have to pay attention. The first step you should do as a business owner is develop your buyer personas. Who are your customers? How old are they? Are they a specific gender? What are their pain points? What are their needs? Uh, education, you know, all these different things so that you can develop you, a profile and, and, and now figure out what's the right platform. All right, so I just want to touch on something really quick right now that's going on right now. And, and it, it, they have a, a term for it called war talk. And this is what's going on in the Ukraine. So there's a lot of, a lot of political stuff coming on and things like that going on uh, in Ukraine. And it's all being put out on, on, uh, on TikTok, okay? Um, so it's very interesting. So like the Washington to Post, for example, has been tracking the, the movement of Russian troops using videos only from TikTok, okay? So they've got, they've got feet on the ground, people there, I mean, just Ukrainians, you know, following the troop movements of, of, uh, of Russian soldiers, and they're uploading it to TikTok. Kind of interesting. A little bit different than the old days when you would have a reporter embedded in the jungle, right? With his, you know, uh, trying to report. So the hashtag uh, Russia Ukraine racked up 132 million views. Okay. Now you'll also see here I have links on a lot of these slides. So I put a I put the link to the presentation in the chat. So if you if you if you look at the presentation, I also included some links to some additional material. So the hashtag U Ukraine. Hashtag Ukraine jumped from 6.4 billion to 17 billion views. It exploded. So people were getting their information about what was going on in Ukraine on TikTok. Now, you could say, wow, that's pretty cool. Um, I guess it's okay, but it's also not okay. All right. Because there was a surge of misleading videos to claim to show the invasion of Ukraine. There were a lot of videos posted to TikTok that were. It, when, once they were sourced, you found that um, that they were like 10 year old videos of like Russia invading Chechnya. So there's a lot of misinformation out there. OK, and this kind of misinformation travels around social media six times faster than the legitimate information, because what happens? We are all we are all guilty of this, whatever our political views are or our, our, our you know, our point of views on things. When we see things that affirm our point of views, okay, then we want to share that, right? See, I was right. See, look, see, look, there, you know, the Russian, okay, that's what we do. So no matter which side of the, 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 the you know, the, the political spectrum you are, it, it doesn't really matter. We all have to be really careful of what we're looking at and what we're sharing, okay? Because we tend to just share things that we, we think, uh, you know, support our point of view, and in many cases on both sides, it's not accurate. So we really need to be careful about what we put out there. Okay, people are getting their news off of Facebook. Yeah, go ahead. I have a, a, a follow-up question from Samantha. Yep. Um, is it fine to post mainly in one format and then occasionally dip into other formats and attempt to reach other audiences? 100% yes. So they offer different things you can do. Now they have stories now, TikTok stories. Right, they have TikTok Live, right? They have live events, right? And then they have your 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 feed, right? Your three minute video feeds. So, absolutely, a lot of the the biggest TikTok influencers out there do exactly that. They post in the feed every day, three times a day. Some of these people are just unbelievable. Uh, there's a guy Tizzy Ent. Yeah. Okay. You know Tizzy Ent? Yeah. Tizzy Ent is he? He's like a a movie director or producer. He's not famous, but what he does is like when he sees these viral videos that go out there where someone's being attacked or something like he helps to identify who that attacker is. And, they, and he plasters that all over TikTok and Instagram and YouTube and they get that person exposed. You know, It's crazy. But he's posting three or four times a day. There's another one. Tom Powell Jr. is another guy that posts like five times a day. But in these different formats, 
doing live, doing TikTok live events and things like that. Yes, absolutely different formats, but you want to be consistent. So if, like the same backdrop, same background, you know, you should really be that, you know, use the same background so that once again, all branding, the most important component to branding is consistency. So if you start using different backgrounds or different colors or, or different graphics, um, it could throw people. Okay. So. And somebody also asked if uh, you can link your Instagram account to TikTok. And I don't think you can. I actually think they fight with each other and they make it harder to get. Yeah. What them. you want to do is you post your video on TikTok, then you want to post it separately. Okay. On the other platforms. Okay. Um, and now Facebook is trying to be more like TikTok. So they're doing much more to support that TikTok format. Okay. Very important. Uh, a lot of these guys will get their, their accounts um, blacklisted really fast because if they put something up there, TikTok is very quick to, to kind of like shut down your account. So a lot of these largest TikTok influencers have three or four accounts, backup accounts. And on their backup account, they might say, this video is posted on YouTube. Check it out. I can't post it here. <laughs> you know, so um, you definitely want to, um, you definitely want to, um, you, you know, post on those different platforms and things and like that. And Gregory pointed out that you can, um, in your uh, TikTok bio, you can link to your Instagram and all that. You so can add you, links in there. And then there's an app that you can use. I think you can only add one or maybe two links in your profile but there's an app that you can do more. So some, some people might have a shopping uh, website, right? So you wanna be able to put that in there, right? So if you're selling, so yes, you can, you can put that link in your profile, but there is an app that will allow you to put a couple more links in there as well, okay? All right, so that fake news, like I said, it triggers a strong emotional response, okay? It really does. And, and you, know, you have to really be mindful, not just on TikTok, but on this, this is just a quick video about this kind of fake news thing. For better and for worse. For sure. And I think when you think about TikTok, this is how billions of people all over the world are receiving news for the first time about the war, especially Gen Z. Uh, on, the, on the positive side, right, it can be used for good. Uh, even just yesterday, the White House brought 30 top TikTokers together to just arm them with the right information about what is happening, how the US is thinking about politics and what they should be talking about on their platforms. And on the flip side, you know, there's obviously misinformation being spread on the platform. And I think TikTok is doing the best they can to, to, to mitigate that in many ways, such as, you know, I think users in Russia, for example, today, they can't live stream, they can't post on TikTok. Uh, so there's no one right way to do it, but I do think making sure that you're arming TikTok creators with, with the right information is a, is a great start. So look, the concern is that TikTok serves a younger generation and is, uh, you know, a younger generation of users around the world going to have the wrong idea of what's really going on in this war? I think it's, it's helpful, actually, I think, to, to see it from the perspective of younger users. Like there are Gen Z citizens on the ground speaking to what's happening in the war. So even if you're reading news for the first time on in articles and such, you can actually see the experiences from young people that are documenting it in their own way. It can be Gen Z dark humor. It can be actually the perspective of soldiers. That is something that's hard to fully discount uh, when you're seeing it through the perspective of people over your own age. And so I think from, from that perspective, it's it's actually kind of helpful to see kind of and, and feel it in real time from for people who are experiencing it on the ground that, you know, they look, they look like you. Maybe just a, a week ago they were in school and now they're hiding in bomb shelters and cooking you know, cooking meals for the first time. Uh, it's, it's a, it makes it feel much more real, I think, to see it from the vantage point of your peers. Those testimonials from Ukraine on TikTok have been incredibly powerful. Okay, so, so as you can see, you have to be really careful. So um, with, with what you're consuming and what, you, what you're sharing as well. So you really have to be careful. Okay, so why is it good for you guys? Why is TikTok good for, 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 uh, for business? Well, it's really that user volume, right? 100 million monthly active users. I mean, think of the old days before we had the internet, you know, and, and you had, you know, TV, you know, radio, billboards, direct mail. Um, and think of what your potential reach could be, you know, how limited you were. Everyone on this TikTok um, call here right now has the ability to reach such a vast audience you know, uh, whether it's through TikTok or other social media platforms or your website, 
and things like that. It's just amazing, like what your potential reach could be um, out there. And 100 million active users who are spending 800 minutes a month. <laughs> you, you know that you know you you've got you've got their attention. There it is, 14.3 hours. That's what it translates to. That's what the average average, not the nutcase like me, the average. Okay, amazing. Okay, so there's also less competition, right? There, there's less competition uh, on TikTok because it's kind of that wild, wild west right now. It's the new thing and people are still figuring out how to use it. it you know, I mean, you'd be a little bit behind now getting on because people have really, really taken to it, but it's still relatively new. The top brands and things like that, the big companies are, are just beginning to discover how to use it. So for example, I'm a diabetic, as I said before. So I'm looking at diabetic stuff. Well, guess what? I got served up as my, uh, as soon as I logged on to TikTok, that first, I think they call it a take a brand takeover. It's called a brand takeover. The first, first thing I see is the thing for Catalina Crunch, which is a keto friendly cereal that's low in carbs, great for diabetics. I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. I click the shop now button. I buy it. You know, I mean, so they're serving me up the ads exactly, you know, that, that based on my needs and based on what my viewing habits are. So there's a lot less competition on that. So less than 50% of the top brands had no presence on TikTok, none. So great opportunity. So the ads are seen favorably. So the TikTok algorithm incentivizes creativity, as I said. Oh, sorry. Okay, getting a little ahead of myself. Okay, so they use creativity, okay? Um, that out of the box kind of thing, okay? Very, very important, okay? It's that you've got to, if you're gonna put a video up there, just don't be sitting at a desk talking about yourself, please. People are gonna skip the video. Got that one, okay, thing. All right, so we're good. Questions so far, everything's good. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about how businesses can use TikTok. Hey, I do have uh, one question. I'm not sure if you're the right person to answer this, but uh, Michelle is asking, would like to take videos of myself baking for my food business. What rec equipment do you recommend using? Um, I'm not sure that's something you can answer or if uh, when I find a speaker that will show us to how to yeah. actually do videos. <laughs> okay, so a couple things. Absolutely, you should do a workshop on just how to do a, make a video, right? I have a video here in this presentation that shows you how to make a video, okay? You can do it using your smartphone, okay? Um, the, be the most important thing, the quality of the video can be a little sketchy, but the audio must be crisp. So you might want to invest in a microphone, like, like a Bluetooth microphone, um, a, a stand for your phone, like, like so you can keep your phone stationary. And then, of course, you know, the lighting is very important on how you light it. Like you, you don't want to be shooting in front of a, like having a window with light, you know, blowing it out. So you, you want to take a little time if you're going to be in your kitchen to maybe position yourself uh, appropriately um, and then have maybe or, or you could have someone holding the phone. There are a lot of YouTube people. They post a uh, YouTube TikTok people. They post their videos. And, they, and they're doing it handheld. And to me, it's a little nauseating. I, I get car sick. Like they're, they're, they're holding it and it's like, go, you know, it's like going like this. And I'm like, woo, you know, slow down, you know? So you could do it with your phone, okay? Um, they make lenses that you can put up on your phone too. Like if you want to do a real close-up thing, right? So you can do these and most people make the video. This is the thing about TikTok is they produce the video in app right on their phone. So they're using their phone to make the video and do the post-production within TikTok. Now you can use other, other things to make the post-production and edit it and splice it and things like that. But the whole key to TikTok and why it's so good is your ability to, to, to produce that video in app, right? So you're gonna use your phone. In most cases, most of these pe things that people are posting, they're using their phone. All right, so why should businesses like TikTok it's that audience targeting. Okay. Sorry, I'm going to get that person there. Okay. Okay. 
So we can target behavior, right? We can target people based on their, their, their in-app usage, right? The videos they look at, okay? We can determine what their behavior is, right? We can target by interests. We can reach people based on their long-term interests. So we can serve them up content based on things they're interested in. I'm interested in fine art. Guess what I get? I get all sorts of great videos about fine art. Uh, this is one woman I follow. She dissects a painting like or, or a sculpture. Like she takes one work of art and then she talks about it. And she talks about the composition. And, and this was intentional. And notice how it forms a pyramid shape. And this is, you know, and notice how he's looking away. And, you know, you know and she goes into this in-depth thing about like Renaissance art. And it's, I really appreciate that. And I can really understand that. Obviously demographics. So we talked about this. Your buyer persona. Who is your buyer? Um, who, who is this person? We want to know exactly who they are. Where are they? And in, and in TikTok, you can you can target all these things in. You can target location and things like that. You do have to be careful in social media um, with certain types of businesses. For example, financial services. If you're offering a debit card or, or a credit card, you can you can be very restricted in who you target because the the um, you know they, they worry about you you. Um, you know, targeting, you know, you're, you're eliminating low income families or, or you're targeting a lower income family with a credit card or, you know, they worry about, um, you know, the, the, these financial institutions and other types of businesses, excluding certain demographics from offers and things like that. So sometimes you have to be a little careful about what you do. And, and in some things like Facebook, they won't allow you to do it. So if you're offering a, like a, a, a debit card and you say, I want to offer it to you know, people between 36 and 58 who live in these zip codes, they won't let you do it. You got to offer it to everyone. Okay. So you have to be aware of these things. Um, obviously, you're going to create your own content. We talked about this. Being consistent is essential. That algorithm will reward you for being consistent. So here are some ideas for content that you can put up there. You know, introduce yourself and your team. You know, maybe there's a, a theme song. One of the things that you, TikTok does is You'll notice a lot of people posting use the same background music and different things. You'll hear these popular things. Well, that's all part of the algorithm. So when you're making your video, if you select these backgrounds or these emojis or these certain music, that also helps to, to, uh, to get your video out there in the algorithm. Because th those things, even like the background music, almost works like a like a, like a you know almost like a hashtag time of thing. We'll put it in feeds and things. So that's why you'll notice you'll hear a lot of the same weird music sometimes. It's not, a lot of it's like weird. Like, I, I'm not into it. So you could you could create an interesting video of you and your team, and and then, you know maybe it's in the office and the, everyone brought their dog in for the day. People love pets. Oh my God, bring your pets in. You know, you you want to you want to get your thing to go viral. You know, have your dog. You know, at the, at the laptop. You know, or with a headset on. You know, answering the calls or whatever. You know, it is uh, it is the the animal videos and things like that with TikTok are just incredible. You also share a success story. How maybe you've overcome adversity. You know, to 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 start your business and build your business that inspires people, right? And people want to share that and follow that, right? Testimonials from valued customers is another thing you could do as well. Um, you know, show how your product's made. We were talking about cooking, right? So let's say you bake cookies or something, or 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 maybe you make some some product, a widget. Show how it's done. You know, show show how things are done, step by step process, and things like that. Um, and then I talked about the pets running around. Love it. So TikTok has a small business resource center where they offer you tips and different things. This is a link down here. Once again, if you go to the link to the video that's in the chat, um, you can um, you can click on this this re resource center, and they will give you useful tips. Okay. They also have this format called hacks. So these are the tips and tricks. So how you can present your product, you know, and show how your product can provide a solution to common things, right? So um, you know. So, you know, sometimes it's like, you know, well, the screw is stripped. You know, like you're trying to screw something into wood and the screw is stripped. Well, you know, put a rubber band on the screw thing and put like they'll show you these little hacks and these little tips on how do you how you fix things like, you know, your door won't close. Well, here, you know, put some gum here and, you know, this thing will do it like these life hacks and things like that on how to overcome these kind of things 
um, and useful little tips like that are very, very popular. And once again, I have a link down here to some examples of some really good TikTok hacks, right? How do you fix things and different things like that. Another great thing about TikTok that if you really want to jumpstart a campaign is you can partner and you have to pay, I mean, but they have influencer marketing. So you can partner with a TikTok influencer that will share or even live stream your content to promote your brand. Okay, there are influencers out there that you can connect with. And obviously you want it to have some sort of synergy and things like that. You don't want to go to Izzy Tint, Izzy Int and have him be an influencer for your uh, product because he's a very controversial guy. He's got a great following, but he's, he's very controversial. So you want to definitely, um, if you want to jumpstart something and you have that type of business that maybe influencer marketing would be helpful, let's say you have a clothing line or you have a, some sort of health, health food product, you know, or, or, an, or a health drink or, you know, something like that, then you could partner with an influencer and, and uh, they'll, they'll go out there and share your content. That's, that's pretty cool. I, th I think that's pretty cool. Um, they have another thing called small wins, where you can demonstrate how a business is turning small wins into big success. This is something that TikTok is, is, is offering, these small wins. And here's, the, here's an example of small wins. I think this is my carpet guy. On TikTok, being yourself can help drive sales. Here's how. Meet Josh, the carpet repair guy. Hey, everybody. So you run your small business on TikTok. How did you grow your audience? I'm not dancing. I'm not twerking. I filmed myself fixing carpet, iron burn, bleach marks, pet damage. And people were watching this stuff, commenting ASMR, hashtag oddly satisfying. I thought, okay, I'm going to start putting more of that content out. A-S-M-R. You felt that, didn't you? You definitely found repairing carpets oddly satisfying. Who knew repairing carpet was trending? People were saying, this is like therapy for me. You've got a community out here who want to see you succeed. Put yourself out there. So how's business now? Multiple times a week, my customers have found me on TikTok, hired me. I just go from one house to the next. Happy customer, happy customer, happy customer. You and me, baby. For life. TikTok. That's how small business wins. TikTok for business. I'd hire that guy. I'd hire that guy in a minute, right? He, he really is passionate about what he does and it comes across in these videos. You know, it's amazing. Does anyone know what the hashtag M, what was it, AMSR stands for? You wanna throw it in chat? I never remember what it actually means. <laughs> well, neither do I. <laughs> There's so many out there, uh, I don't know, but I'm, I'm sure it's not nothing bad. <laughs> So, uh, okay. So, they, I mean, that's a great, you see his, his TikTok, see how he had fun. Like he took something as carpet repair. Like could anything be more dry than carpet repair? And he made this fun, you know, these fun videos of him, you know, and you saw he took his, his iPhone and mounted it on a little tripod and that's how he, he shoots his stuff. So there's a couple of, there's a, a couple of different ways you can advertise on TikTok, right? So you have what's called in-feed ads where, where your, your post will appear right within a feed when people are looking at stuff. There it is. Autonomous sensory meridian response. <laughs> That's, that is uh, ASMR. All right. That's why I can never remember what it stands for. <laughs> gosh, oh my gosh. Yeah. I think of it like meditation. I always want to put that M as meditation or meditative. <laughs> that's what it seems to be oh my god <laughs> all right so we got a, some different ad formats for tiktok in feed ads they show up you're branded you have branded hashtags branded effects uh top view ads with a little strip i'm going to show them to you and then the brand takeovers brand takeovers is that when you first log on to tiktok it's that first full screen experience where you'll see like an ad with a with a call to action on it right okay so these are ways you can do it. So, so you have your organic TikTok where you can just post things and use hashtags and, and educate people organically and just post things. But then if you want to jumpstart it, you can advertise on TikTok, right? And you can pay. And that's where that audience targeting comes in. That's where you, you pick a location. You, you can target interests. You can target behavior. That's all done through the paid part of TikTok. 
and I talked about this is the privacy data concerns. So engineers in China had access to this data up until January. Okay. So they've now taken steps. I, I'm still, you know, I'm not 100% convinced everything's safe. I, I, don't, I don't think any data is safe anywhere out there. That's why you got to be really careful. Okay. So they also offer a program. It's called Follow Me. It's an educational program. And they, um, they offer guides, creative tools, and even coaching from other small business owners. Okay. So there's a link in here, which grow with TikTok. You can click on that. And they have, TikTok has a Follow Me program. So these are great resources that you as a small business should be taking advantage of. Just like you're here on this, this call now with Miller, and Miller offers all these great resources, there's also these things out there where you can, where you can be, be a part of this program and reach out and get coaching from other small business owners that are using TikTok. What's, what's the best way to do it? You know, you find some young kid that's, that's you know, active on TikTok, you know, who's making videos with his phone and, and posting this stuff and, and putting in the post uh, video effects and, and emojis and text and music and all these great things. You know, find a young kid and have him help you with your business doing it. Um, these are the branded hashtags. So they, 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 you can use a, a catchy hashtag um, with your video to showcase a specific action. You got to be careful though. Like you don't want to hijack a branded hashtag so you get your content out there. If, it, if, you're, if your video is not relevant to this, in this case, this hashtag is shot black. Um, if, if, if your content is not relevant to it, then don't, don't, you know, don't use it. That's hijacking. That's, that's kind of spamming, right? You know, you really don't want to do that. Think of it. Think of it. There's a conversation going on, you know, between, you know, between three people and you walk up and you stand right in the middle and you start talking. It's like, uh, you weren't invited. <laughs> Where did you come from? And that's, you know, that's kind of like how it is with social media, right? It's, it's kind of like a cocktail hour where everyone's talking. And if all you do is talk about yourself, then people aren't going to really respond to it. But if you're at a cocktail party and you engage in people and say, tell me about you, tell me what you do. I want to learn more about you. And hey, you know, I know someone that can help you. Blah, blah. That's how social media works, right? It's just, it's just like that cocktail power, you know, cocktail uh, you know, analogy. Um, you, you want to engage people. You want to provide them with information. So don't just leverage these hashtags and, and, and put your stuff out there because they're popular, okay? You have branded effects. So there are filters, out there that enable you to to you know interact with your brand in ways like there's buttons and different things you can use and emojis and 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 i think they're coming out with some even more stuff now very recently um you know so it's uh it, you have these kind of branded effects then you have the top view ads these are ads that appear at the top of your feed when you're first opening tiktok we talked about these in feed ads they auto play um and now now this is just come out in the last couple of days. One of the concerns you have as an advertiser is having your ad appear, appear next to objectionable content. And TikTok does have objectionable content. Um, they have a new thing now. I think it's like TikTok for adults or something, or it's, it's not good, you know? Um, and, you know, they, they put some of this stuff up there and, and some of the stuff is not good. Okay, it's not good. So, do you want your ad next to a lion ripping a you know a, 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 a you know an elk apart or something? You know, I mean, you know, or or something almost pornographic, you know, in nature. Like, so now they have this ad inventory filter where it help gives you some control over the content that's displayed around your ads. Right, that's a big concern with 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 businesses advertising right digitally. Right, you place an ad on the Google Display Network. Okay. Well, what if that ad appears on a pornographic website? What if it appears on, you know, some radical website? You know, you know, you know th that's a big concern. So, so they're trying to address that by, by allowing you to filter some of the content around your ads so that, you know, it's all about adjacency. So if someone sees like some kook and then there's your ad, <laughs> that's, that's not good. You know, that, that's not, that's not, that's not going to be good for business, you know? So here's a video of the ad formats. Uh, we, we, we have like 10 minutes on time. So I, I, I don't, you know, I kind of talked to you about it. You can watch the video, um, you know, later, I think, and, and, uh, and it will sh actually show you the ad formats.
So then they have this thing, grand takeovers. Henry, can I yeah. just interrupt for a moment to ask you a question about the hashtags? Yep. Um, just because as a TikTok user, I've noticed that like when Thor came out, every single video had a hashtag Thor, whatever the name of the movie was, or like, so there seem to be some hashtags that are not, you know, political in any way, more of just like a, like the, just the most popular thing at the moment that seemed to be okay for everybody to use. Is that true? Yeah. You know, yeah. The, the, the people are high, uh, you know, hijacking a lot of these hashtags, but here's the thing. Just because you put your thing in a, in a feed with a hashtag, that doesn't mean someone's going to want to watch it. Right. So, you know, you're better off like not pissing people off. Like they're, they're just going to skip your video if it's not relevant to what they're looking at or, or that something piques their interest or, or their behavior or anything like that, you're really wasting your time, right? So, so trying to do that, you know, it's kind of like putting flyers on every car in a parking lot, you know, for, you know, um, you, you know, for something very specific. Well, there might only be two cars in the whole parking lot that, that are relevant, but guess what? You pissed off 98 people that now have to pull the flyer off their car, you know, and say, they look at it and go, well, I'm never going to use this guy because he's putting crap on my car. So I'm going to go through hashtags real quick too. So the brand takeover is that high impact thing right at the beginning. There's a link here, more to TikTok formats. We talked about the partner with influencers. Here's a link to the creator marketplace where you can connect with brands and the and the and your appropriate influencers okay so um once again elizabeth put the link in there again i know i saw that because the other component is monetization that if you start getting a certain number of followers you know TikTok will start paying you right so then you can get you know sponsorship deals you know brand deals you know all sorts of stuff based on the number of a large number of followers not sure what it is could it be a hundred thousand I, 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 you know, it changed. I'm not 100% sure. So if anyone knows that, they want to throw it in chat. Um, but there is that monetization component. Uh, and a lot of the people that have monetized their things, then they start doing the, the, the live streaming and different things like that as well. Um, and some people make some pretty serious money doing this. You know, it's, it's kind of interesting. So, uh, all right. So here's four ways to find relevant ideas. So well, number one, you want to identify trends, right? What's going on now? You, what, what Ukraine was going on now, but what's going on now specific to your type of business? I mean, you know, you don't want to be putting, you know, a, a TikTok video for rubber duckies that you sell using the, the Ukraine hashtag. <laughs> you know, it's just not appropriate, right? So, you know, identify trends within your industry, different things like that. If it's health, okay. Or if it's something of interest to your target audience, right? Your buyer persona. Remember I talked about, talk about your customers' needs, their wants, their pain points. Um, all right, so I'm diabetic, okay? Well, general health things, exercise would be something that would be appropriate for someone my age, my medical condition. It's not just about blood tests and eating right. It's also exercise and things like that. So make sure that you're identifying the appropriate trends and things that to do it. Um, you can go to the Discover page and look at those trends right on TikTok. That's the best place. Start looking at trends and hashtags and sound. Do a little research, okay? You go to the Discover page on TikTok. You can also look at what other creators are doing and jump on those trends. Like look at what other people are doing. Look at their hashtags. Look at the things they're they're talking about. Look at the the uh, the background music. Or listen to the background music they're using, or the emojis they're using, and all those other things. And look, it's it's uh, it's okay to steal and copy, okay. And then once you start finding your own voice, okay, you gotta you gotta uh, then you can start being a little bit more unique. But but just start by following. Right. Just start looking at peers, looking at what peers are doing, whether they're your competitors or peers in other areas, different things like that. Um, just start looking. And then you can do some audience research. Look at the hashtags. OK. And, 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 and put the hashtag in and see what's what po what videos are coming up under that hashtag. Right. So you can do a little research. All right. So some best practices, because I know we're running out of time. Eighty two percent of videos use at least one hashtag. OK. 
Uh, you can use up to 100 characters in a post, okay, with these, with these posts that are, that are on the, the video. Okay, popular hashtags are better for reaching a broader audience, right? If you use a very specific hashtag that you created, well, guess what? No one else is using that hashtag, right? So, you know, you could start out using popular hashtags, but there are also niche hashtags. So if you're with a very specific target audience, research those niche hashtags because that's where you want to be. But don't come up and develop your own hashtag with, you, with your name in it because no one's going to be using that hashtag. Okay, find the relevant hashtags. Okay, mix in popular hashtags with less competitive hashtags because the less ha competitive hashtags might get you out in front of more people. Okay, okay, you want to make content that stands out. High quality, eye-catching, using transitions, different things like that in the videos. They recommend you post three and a half times a week. That's their best practice, okay? Um, okay, so 20 million views. Those videos posting brand events and things like that, you know, can get up to 20 million views and different things like that. So this is the tutorial on how to create a TikTok video, okay? This guy walks you through it, okay? Um, I'm not going to show it now because it's like five minutes and we only have like a couple minutes left. But if you, if you have the link to the thing, you can watch this video and he'll show you. He sets up his camera on a tripod. He, he, he records it. He shows you how to do the editing on the phone and different things like that. But it's just a quick overview. I think, Elizabeth, if you did a nice workshop, you know, with someone step by step, an hour showing you how to do it, I, I, would, I would be on that workshop. OK, so I would definitely do it. So there's the guy there. All right. So these were just some of my favorite TikTokers that I follow. Um, here's my XL friend here. She's got 1.4 million followers. OK, so here she is. I'm sure it can't be that bad. What have you got to do? I have to divide this data into each category. What a mess. Everything is easy if you know how. What? Okay, so you can see she's just using this juxtaposition of herself. Uh, here's my good friend who who talks about art, you know, and and it's just you know very very to me very educational, very informative. And she goes into it in detail and stuff like that. Um, I just want to share like this guy here is a guy you should follow, this social tea pro guy. If you wanna learn about TikTok, this is the guy, okay? He's got 500,000 followers. He's a social media agency and he does all these great video posts, okay? And, and he's got four and a half million likes and things like that. And he talks about all different things with TikTok, useful websites, different things like that, very good. And then here's my, my friend, the diabetic. She, has, she, she is a type one diabetic. She talks about all sorts of different things that have to do with diabetes and all sorts of different things. So uh, very, very, uh, very, very useful. Um, very, very useful. So um, that being said, it's 10 o'clock. <laughs> I mean, certainly if people have questions, you know, um, we'll it's, stay on. But it's hard to talk about TikTok in just one hour. It is. So the results of our survey there. Um, so 35% of the people surveyed currently use TikTok. 10% just kind of use it to watch, you know, funny videos, you know, entertainment. And 55% are not using it yet of the people who were on here. So that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So you should check it out. Look, check it out and, um, and uh, you know, see for yourself. Start following some people. I'll share the results. Um, and... Um, and, and uh, you know, try it for yourself and see if it, if it helps you with education about your business or maybe that there's a potential that you can use it for your business to, to post out there to get new clients um, or even ultimately advertise on it. As somebody who uses YouTube, uh, YouTube, TikTok, I definitely have purchased things through TikTok. Yeah, I have too. And yeah. if I saw more local people on it, I would purchase locally, but I do try to purchase small business items on TikTok. There's a guy, he runs some sort, it's almost like a consignment store in Medford. Um, it's right on Horseblock Road. 
um, he buys like bins of closeouts and he brings it in. And so on any given day, he might have a bin of, you know, shower heads and, you know, uh, you know, and, uh, so, uh, you know, beach chairs. And so he, he's on TikTok and he goes through before he opens and he says, all right, here we go. This is what I got today. I, you know, I got a closeout on, you know, landmines, you know, and I, you know, whatever it is, you know, and he goes through it and he does a great job with that local angle, you know, great job you know, down and dirty. He's just walking around with his phone and, you know, but it's great. Absolutely great. Yeah, there's like a sweet spot. If you do it the right way, your quality of video is not as important. So it it's, and I think you said it during the presentation, it's really finding that niche for your customers. What, 100%. Yeah, what will your customers accept? You know, and I would imagine a consignment shop, people are fine. They want a deal. The video doesn't have to be 100%. Right. Well, what's appropriate, right? What's appropriate for your business? That, that, that's exactly right. You know, if you're a videographer and you're promoting your business, you better have good videos on TikTok. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. so you, you should have high quality things, you know, uh, you know, so you want to, you want to definitely be, be appropriate. Be appropriate in everything you do. Be appropriate in the hashtags you use. Be appropriate in who you follow. Um, you know, be careful. You know, like I said, there's a lot of sketchy stuff up there. I'm not going to lie to you. When it comes into my feed and I'm like, Ugh, like, what is this? You know, get out, get out of here. Go away. You know, I mean, so you can block that stuff and, and things like that. But, uh, but all in all, I find it enormously educational for me on certain things. And then, um, uh, you know, and entertaining to a second level, you know, sometimes some things are entertaining. Like, like you said, someone walking into a plate glass door is, you know, they think there's no door there. That's, that's always a yuck. Or someone's trying to jump over, you know, jump over a river and they, you know, <laughs> they trip and they fall face first in the water or whatever it is. So that stuff's good too. All right. Okay. Any questions before we wrap up? Well, thank you all so much for being here. Uh, we will uh, be posting this video to YouTube. Uh, I want to say later today, but maybe tomorrow. Um, and I will include a link to the presentation there. So if you'd like to share it with anybody, feel free. Um, if you would like to make sure you get information on uh, the hands-on TikTok program that I will try to plan, please leave your email in the chat. And thank you all so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.